Hello all, this is uh, Triceratops on myaquariumclub.com. Wanted to show you my salt water setup. Um, as you can see, it's very hard to keep a bow front aquarium clean from algae. Uh, it's about as far down as I can reach with my arm to uh, scrape the front. Uh, the bottom kind of stays that way unless I really have time to use the little magna float to scrape it for hours and hours. Um, if I'm bored, sometimes I do that, but not very often. Um, anyway, this is my cabinet. I built this about eight years ago. Um, a friend of mine helped me with the doors because they were pretty complicated to build. Um, goes with the shape of the aquarium. Um, <clears throat> show you the inside a little bit here. Those are two jackknives. Those are pretty cool little fish I just picked up a while back. There's my blue maxima clam. There's another, well, I don't know if that's a maxima or another kind it's called. Anyway, there's another little clam right there behind it. Um, another clam up there on top of that rock. And those are all yellow polyps. That's a Kenya tree coral there. Uh, this is a cluster of uh, red, blue uh, xeranthids. Um, a frog spawn. A colony of zinnias, which have kind of outgrown, and I believe they're choking out my uh, torch coral that I had there, which I can't move because it's bonded to the rock with epoxy. So, without risk of damaging the whole rock structure, I would. I can't really do anything about it, so to either cut the zinnias back or just let the torch coral fade out. That's a guy, um, I can't remember the name of it. It's a. I'll think of it in a minute. This is a purple tipped uh, Acropora that's actually like doubled in size since I got it. Some little green star polyps there in the background. A recordian mushroom down there in the rock crevice. As you can see back there, there's another uh, frilly or fuzzy mushroom behind those zinnias. Um, green hammer coral, which I just disturbed when I was cleaning him, so he's not completely open. But um, he was. I only had he only had two heads when I first got him. He's got nine different heads now, possibly more. I haven't counted when he closes up at night for a while now. A few green button polyps. Another Kenya tree cor uh, coral that actually spawned off that other one. Um, a bubble tip or it's a bubble coral which is basically an anemone that grows on a hard surface. Actually crust a skeleton behind it. It was larger but it fell down in the sand for a while, and I, by the time I realized it, it had partially died, but that part there is doing pretty good. So I'm going to leave where it's at. There's one of my little uh, dotty backs, I think that's what that is. Purple dotty back, you like that little hole. Um, there's an orange sponge right there. It does pretty well there on the bottom of the tank. Um, can't have too much light on the sponge. Some more yellow polyps. Some little zoanthids growing there on that little piece I stuck in that rock. I have a different type. Um, here's my maize brain, which is probably growing about 50% since I got it. It's doing well. Um, here's a uh, leather coral, uh, frilly leather coral. And it's doing pretty well there. Um, what I missed up here was another toadstool uh, leather, green toadstool leather behind that pajama cardinal. Um, it's doing well back there. I'm afraid he's running out of room to grow though. I may have to trim that Kenya tree back a little bit and uh, give him some space. A little red or brown mushroom right there. Um, Here's another Acropora, but when I first got it, it uh, 
had a bunch of bleached tips that came in bleached when I got it and what's left of it seems to be doing pretty well um, some more green button polyps there uh, there's a little piece of a sun coral which I may need to move back out into some a better lighting area some more green star polyps there behind the algae and down here another sun coral you can see it right there that one's doing real well down there gets enough light but not too much and there's my feather duster and back here I got a cocoa worm by that pajama gardenal pink kind of a pink cocoa worm there um, oh and up here uh, I got some um, jasmine polyps oh this is a groove gorgonia is what that is and that thing's quadrupled in size uh, when I first got it it's grown like crazy I'm gonna start taking cuttings off of it and put them over in this tank which is actually tied into the same system to uh, propagate coral and sell them back to the local fish store here um, I got a few little pieces in there that I just haven't figured out what to do with yet and anyway get to the system um, I got an overflow box which is kind of the wrong way to do things these days but it works for me I've figured out how to make it work. I keep a towel on it, keep the algae from growing inside the tubes too much and clogging it up. And then I manufactured those with little suction tubes on top of them to keep them primed so they don't uh, get air pockets in them. Uh, down here, my main water comes in through here there's holes in that pipe there that lets it filter down through the bio balls below that's a little six gallon aquarium which then dumps over into this 10 gallon aquarium which is actually a refugium you can see the plants growing in there the fern clerpa which in some places like california you can't get because if it gets in the rivers and streams it can uh take over so uh, they don't allow it in California and probably some other places around the world there it's got some rubble rock there it comes through an inch and a half pipe over here some rubble um, and then I built that channel there so the water goes down through here down to the bottom it goes into uh, my uh, crushed coral and agronite chunks that I got down there uh, that inch and a half pipes that return from that 10 gallon or 15 gallon over there and there's my protein skimmer that hangs on the outside um, it's been working pretty good uh, I use a needle well pump pump it uh, this is the main sump where all the lines come in extra lines there's a float switch in case the power shuts off, my sump's not, I didn't uh, build it quite right to handle the extra water if the power shuts off completely. So if the power shuts off, that float switch engages and turns on a uh, little pump that's connected to a battery backup system, which pumps the water out through that tube there and over into a bucket uh, behind the tank right there. You can see it. And here's my main pump, which has got a little dust on it. I need to clean it up. But, uh, it's a reflow, uh, seven, rated for 1,750 gallons per hour. Uh, but I got it restricted a little bit because it's, it uh, actually pumps a little too much. Um, but it's a good pump. I've had it for about eight years. It was in storage for about three, but. Uh, been doing good. There's my RO filter that I use to uh, filter my water. Um, 
and we'll get to the back side. Oh, I'll show you my lights real quick. I hadn't already. You can't even buy those anymore, but they're, it's a, uh, <clears throat> a current, produced by current back about 10 years ago, um, out of orbit system. It's got two metal halides, four actinics, and then I added the Ecozotic LEDs as well. Um, I got a 10,000K bulb in there and a 12K bulb in there. A little bit of just experimental to see what, what grows good under different light. And <clears throat> see in the back. I keep a 15 gallon trash can full of top off water and I run up and I fill from my over my RO system. And that's got a new oven map pump right there, that little black box is this little 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 wheel that turns and pumps on a rubber tube. Uh, to keep the tank topped off in there. It's also got a float switch that's down in the water inside the uh, main sump pit. Um, there's my UV ultraviolet uh, light, which I need to check and make sure it hasn't burnt out. Uh, right here is just an added little top filter that I got up there that's running on the top of the water. Just the regular hang on the back. A little added biological filtration. Uh, this is a mechanical filter uh, that I use to pre-filter the water before it goes into my um, uh, <clears throat> water water chiller over there. That's actually I'll show you in a minute. Keeps the water at a nice uh, like 78 degrees during the day, and it drops to about 76 at night. Uh, uh, the thermometer just went off. And anyway, uh, this pipe goes up to here, which I'm getting ready to change that out to all three quarter inch pipe. And that's a tank that I recently built. It's uh, about 65 gallons of water. Um, I was gonna use it just for mixing salt um, and then dumping it through that valve right there, right there, um, into the tank while I, while I suck uh, siphon water out of the tank, which I dump on the patio in the backyard, but um, it helps keep the weeds down. But um, now I think what I'm going to do is take this all three-quarter line. Right now I got it reduced to half inch right there, but uh, I'm going to make it all three-quarter line and uh, put a couple of valves down here and actually put a pump, another pump in the sump that will cycle the water through there. Um, creating an even larger capacity system and I had 65 gallons to my system which will improve uh, cycling you know nit nitrite um, nitrate cycling um, or the cycling um, and just uh, be easier to maintain the water parameters and then when I need a water change in the future I'll just uh, close one valve open another um, turn the pump off, of course, uh, then siphon the water out of that tank up there, and um, and then there'll be the water change will take me about three days because I'll by the time I siphon the water out of there, I'll have to fill it back up with fresh water uh, in preparation to mix through salt, uh, which would take about three about two days is what I'm averaging about 48 hours to fill that 65 gallon container full of uh, RO water. Um, Anyway, there's my ballast, my halides. Um, there's the battery backup system I was talking about that I uh, use on that one pump in case the power shuts off. Um, kind of a maze back there with all the wires, kind of spaghetti, but it, it all works. And I got all the wires off the floor, so it's pretty safe. That little container up there I've been using to drip uh, caulk washer. Um, drip into the tank which helps maintain calcium levels as well as um, pH etc. Um, here you'll see 
my uh, chiller that sits back there. It's got plenty of airflow through there. Um, and that, um, that keeps my water temperature maintained. And um, that's about it on that system. Um, and you see I have several uh, circulation pumps in the tank. One up there, there's one there. Dual head there. One down here. And one up here. Um, and uh, they're all pretty much on timers where they go on and off. They're not running constantly. There may be one or two times during the day that all of them are running together, but then usually they're cycling different times. Um, <clears throat> anyway, like there you can see my temperature is 77.9 right now, which is pretty much ideal. Um, <clears throat> and this is my other system over here that I recently set up just for fresh for fish only. It's a little uh, hexagon aquarium. I built this cabinet. Um, made it look like it's part of the house. Um, anyway, you see it's a hexagon aquarium. I put a mirror behind it. So it'd be like a mirror tank. Which I need to get in there and clean that algae in there too. I got clownfish in there, a little uh, half moon trigger fish. One little uh, green chromis damsel. And there's also a shrimp goby in there that's somewhere hidden under the rock. There's my little trigger fish. He hangs out back there. Um, <clears throat> this is the plumbing back in there for this. Um, <clears throat> oh, move this ladder out of the way. Um, <clears throat> you can see I decorated that back there with seashells. And a underwater escape. That's a refugium system there. Plaid. I got a mangrove, but the mangrove, I don't know, for some reason it's looking like it's dying off. I'm hoping it'll relief. I may need to prune it back and uh, see if it'll restart. I moved it from that aquarium over there over here because what I want to do is eventually get two of them growing in here side by side. And you can see the holes in the top, which I want them to grow up and out of the top of the uh, cabinet up toward the ceiling when they get large enough. And I got about six inches of substrate in there, so there's plenty of soil for them to grow into. And here's my sump system for this. Protein skimmer, a little, uh, it's a, it's the size of a six gallon, but it's a, called a 10 tall. Uh, the base dimensions is the size of a six, a standard glass six gallon. Anyway, that dumps into there, goes to a filter pad. Uh, there's a pump that runs the, the uh, protein skimmer and then a pump that returns the water up to the main tank, comes down, dumps into this tank, and goes down this tube, dumps into the sump. Anyway, that's about it. I hope this. Uh, helps you people. Maybe you can get an idea of what you want to build. There's my maroon clown. He's a cool fish. I wish I had a um, anemone for him to be in. Oh, there's my uh, coral beauty angel came out. There's my flame angel. I got three pajama cardinals in there. There's a scissor tail blenny. Uh, little clownfish. I had two of them, but I don't know what happened to the other one. I don't know if he got sucked into the overflow or uh, <clears throat> just died, I guess, maybe. There's a uh, fire, or uh, purple firefish, or what they call it, back there. There's two of them in there. Um, there's one of my, it's my self in tang, one of my yellow tangs. Um, there's another yellow tang. My uh, powder blue tang. Um, there's, there's my pajamas. There's one, two, three. They kind of hang out together. And um, there's two little green chromuses in there. Um, 
if I can find my other firefish. He usually hangs out over here somewhere. I don't see him. Oh, there he is, hanging out on the bottom. Right back there in the corner. And there is a sea cucumber down in there. It's hard to see. But he's under that rock, and he keeps the sand nice and clean for me all day long. Um, there's a serpent star. He's got his leg wrapped down there, but you can't see him. Anyway. And there's a blue hippo tang, but he tends to hide except when it's feeding time. You can see him right there in the rock. That's his little spot that he hangs. Um, just missed my dragon net. He popped his head out, but he disappeared again. And a skunk clownfish up there. He hangs out up there most of the time. Um, that's his spot. That's about it. I've invested a lot of money and a lot of time and I'm just taking a break. I'm not going to add anything for a while. I'm just going to try to get everything settled and um, see what makes it and what doesn't and as far as coral and um, do a few more water changes down the road and eventually maybe get some new fish but uh, about coraled out I might I might get one or two later on but um, for now I'm about done with coral they're expensive too oh there's a plate coral it got buried in the sand behind a rock and partially died off but part of it's still surviving there it's doing a little better up top here Hoping it'll come back. You can see the purple on top. They're actually a really easy coral to keep. Mine just got buried in the sand. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.